we've got both of these meters here on the same line, both marine, pretty comparable. But again, the field piece when you turn wireless on reads that extra extra two amps, that extra phantom voltage. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Obviously, it looks a little bit different in here today. Instead of recording down in the garage, had a bunch of stuff going on down in there. So I had to uh, record up in the office. But I wanted to get this video out to you guys. Uh, recently just picked up this new field piece meter. I've only had it a few days, but I noticed some things that I thought were important to uh, get out to you guys in case any of you guys are looking at picking one of these up anytime here in the near future. Uh, some things that I thought maybe that it did that it actually does not do. Some things that are important to me that I wish I kind of would have known ahead of time before I purchased it. So. Uh, let's get right into it. So first couple things I do like about this thing, comes in a nice soft case, as you can see here, most of the field piece tools come in a, in a case similar to this. So you get the meter itself in a nice soft case, you get just a normal set of meter leads, also includes the little Molex plug testers, uh, these are really handy to have to get into those hard to reach plugs, testing voltage, resistance, stuff like that. Includes two thermal couples, K-type, and also uh, two little Velcro straps, as well as the alligator clips for meter leads, which I think that it's really nice that Field Piece includes all these accessories. So I've been using Fluke pretty much my whole career. Fluke pretty much never includes any of these accessories. While they're not essential, a lot of these things do make it much easier. I mean, the Molex plug testers, those are super handy to have, the alligator clips. All that stuff is just a nice added benefit to have it included in the kit instead of having to go out and purchase a third party accessory kit or purchase one directly from Fluke, which is usually pretty expensive for that kit. Another thing that the meter does include is the magnet on the back. So it's already gonna have that on there. Um, it's nice, you don't have to go purchase that again. Uh, an accessory that the Flukes rarely ever come with. So that's really nice that this one is included. But one thing you'll notice right off the bat is that this thing is huge. I think it's almost 18 inches long, which uh, if you got a Fluke 902 FC up next to it, your the 902 comes up right to the bottom of this amp clamp, and then it's basically like having this amp clamp right on top of that meter. So that's something to keep in mind. This thing is massive. Might have a hard time fitting this into some of your tool bags if you're wanting to keep it out of the included case, which I never really run my meters in the included meter bag. I prefer to keep them in my bag, and this thing is pretty huge. Another thing that I really do like about this meter is, it, is that it includes the uh, little area to keep one of your probes in. Just makes it much easier when you're taking voltage readings to uh, be able to see exactly what you what the measurements that you're taking, having your hand free, and not having to worry about setting this off to the side somewhere that you may or may, may or may not be able to get a clear view of the display. So one of the main reasons that I did pick this one up over the 480 was that this head rotates. So having that ability to get into some hard to reach areas, I'm sure we've all come across that, but this is, that's a pretty awesome feature of this meter. Put that to the use, works great, 90 degrees in each direction, and that's an awesome feature of this thing. Also on the amp clamp is the little light. It is activated every time you open the clamp, which is really nice for some of those late night calls or just working in a dimly lit area trying to get an amp reading. It's awesome that they included that. And then one thing that I've noticed about field piece meters in the past is usually this dial indicator or selector switch. Usually feels kind of cheap, and this one actually feels really nice. It's nice positive clicks. It uh, doesn't feel like you're gonna snap this thing off, so I like how this meter feels in the hand. Uh, I just really don't like how big it is. So going around the dial here, the first one, W there, that's watts, that's your power factor. Tested that thing out, and it was actually, it's pretty neat to be able to take a voltage reading, amp reading, and then it just calculates out the uh, wattage there for your power factor. So pretty cool that it does that. The backlight here is nice and bright. I also like that the other little LED activates on that and lights up that dial indicator for your selection so you can see exactly what parameter you're trying to select there. Right after watts, you've got your resistance, your diode tester, and your continuity testing. One thing I really liked about this meter was that it goes all the way up to 50 mega ohm, which is pretty nice to be able to have that right in kind of your all-in-one meter. Next here, you've got your NCV, your non-contact voltage. Works well. It works from 24 volts AC all the way up to 480 volts, and it, it worked on everything that I tested it out on. Just eliminates the need to have to carry around a secondary voltage stick, something like that. As you got close to it, 
starts beeping and flashes a red little indicator here letting you know that it is live. Got microfarads, testing capacitors, temperature. There's actually two dual temperature inputs here, two type K. Uh, that's another big reason that I purchased this meter in particular is this thing is kind of doing a whole lot of things in one meter, having the ability to take dual temp readings. More on that uh, a little bit later as we, as we get into this thing. Next, straight down, you've got your uh, phase detection, L1, L2, L3. So I tested this thing out and, and I tried to fake it out and went all over the place. This thing just nailed it every time. So it's a pretty cool feature. It lets you know which way is forward and reversed. I, faked, I tried to fake it out, uh, telling it that like L2 was L1, etc. And this thing got it right every time. So that's a pretty cool feature that is integrated into this thing. Next, after that, you've got your microamps for flame rectifier, stuff like that. And here you've got Hertz, that is the frequency tester through the meter leads themselves. So just to make sure you've got 60 Hertz coming in and you've got volts DC, amps DC. So this is the area that you'd be able to check your amp draw and inverter, mini splits, stuff like that. So next here we've got Hertz and the range for 600 amps AC as well as voltage testing. And then you've got your 100 amps as well as Hertz and uh, volts AC. So. These are one of the areas that I had problems was the Hertz to the amp clamp. So these sections here, you would clamp onto a conductor off of a VFD and this will display out. So the first one that I tested this out on was for a condenser fan motor for the head pressure control on a chiller. And it was giving me all kinds of erratic readings. It was all over the place. So I checked out the manual and found that the sensitivity range on this, unfortunately, in the 100 amp range is only down to seven amps. So if you're, if, if whatever motor or whatever load you have is pulling less than seven amps, this does not give you a reliable reading. I was able to get it to read kind of intermittently once it got to like five and a half to six amps, then it would, it would kind of give me some readings in there, but it was so intermittent and some of it was just erratic that it didn't, it, it was unusable. So I found another motor that I was able to ramp down to seven amps and it was able to read. Um, I'll put some of that video here. So as you can see, it works no problem. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you're purchasing this, trying to get uh, frequency readings off of motors. Um, I Looking around online on the, on the specs on FieldPieces app, I didn't see anything that was letting you know that there was a minimum amp rating in order for this to function. So that seven amp function, that seven amp minimum is for the range from 10 to 100 hertz. And then from 100 hertz to 400 hertz, it is a 20 amp minimum. So that's something to keep in mind if that's one of the main reasons that you're looking at getting this is make sure that your, whatever you're gonna be checking is gonna be pulling at least seven amps, otherwise that hertz feature is gonna be basically useless to you. Another thing that I found was, that was a little bit disappointing with this was the dual type K thermal couples. So this has the wireless features. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't integrate in with Measure Quick yet. I have heard that that's in the works for the future, so we'll see when that ends up happening or if it, if it does end up happening at all. It does does work with the job link. It was I had no problem with range or with this thing staying connected, so I didn't have any problems there with the wireless capabilities. But what was unfortunate is when you're using the thermal couples off this, it does not allow you in the job link app to integrate that into the refrigeration portion. So if you're working on some larger equipment and the pipe size is too big for the um, for the clamps from the field piece probes, it will not let you use the temperature from this meter in order to calculate superheat, subcooling, all that good stuff. So that's one thing that I hope that they will add when they do integrate this to measure quick if they do, or maybe field piece will make an update to the app to allow this temperature to be um, into the refrigeration portion of the app. For me, it's, it's basically pointless to have this just reading temperature on the readout on a on a mobile smart device. Um, if I'm gonna do that, I can just use any other dual thermometer there to get the readings and do the superheat subcooling calculations myself off of a PT chart. But if this could integrate and do that, that would be awesome. My biggest complaint with this thing so far, which kind of is a deal breaker for me, is I found that when you are running the wireless portion of this, it throws the amp draw or the amp readings completely off. So I first found this on that, on the pump that I was testing the Hertz readings on. Once I ramped that down to seven, eight amps in order to get the frequency to read correctly, I noticed that whenever I turned the wireless on, 
that my amp reading was reading higher. So I'll put some footage in here now so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so another interesting thing I found here is when you're trying to read amps and volts or hertz and you've got it uh, wireless on, it reads an extra two amps, two phantom amps and uh, some phantom voltage. You can see there's nothing on the bolt on the amp clamp and we're reading here as well as on the app. When you turn the wireless off, everything reads zero as it should. So I wanted to test that on an actual uh, conductor that was pulling amps. And we'll see what it does here. All right, so you can see now we're pulling we're drawing 8.8 .8 amps, which pretty much matches the VFD here. Pulling 8.8 .8 amps. Uh, read correctly on the app as well. Actually, the app is not reading because we've got wireless off. So as soon as we turn wireless back on, it gives us that extra two amps and a phantom voltage again there. So that could be an issue when you're trying to stream back through the app, which is going to give you some false readings on your amp draw. All right, so we've got both of these meters here on the same line. Both of them are reading pretty comparable, but again, the field piece when you turn wireless on reads that extra extra two amps, that extra phantom voltage. So that is a pretty big problem, especially when that is one of the main benefits of using it wirelessly is to be able to put it behind a a blower door or a panel in order to have that air leakage by it and, and read a, an accurate amp draw. But if it's gonna be off every time the wireless is on, and I mean, it's not a little bit off, but having two amps added on to a eight amp draw, I mean, that's over 20%. That's a huge, huge difference. So um, I'll show you, it's, it does it every time I turn the wireless on, no matter what, so. So you got it there and you go to amps and turn wireless on. And right now there's obviously nothing connected to those or going through those amp clamps, but we're reading a half an amp. So I've seen this thing read from half an amp all the way up to, I believe two and a half, maybe three amps when the wireless feature is turned on and that's tacked on to the true reading. So I verified that with a couple other meters just to make sure and also verified with compared to a VFD and, and this thing was definitely adding it on. So the bigger concern is when you send it over to, when you've got it on the 600 amp range and you turn the wireless on, I've seen this be all the way up to 13 amps off. So I mean, that is a drastic difference and that's something to keep in mind if you're purchasing this for the wireless features of being able to do wireless current readings. Well, there you go guys. Those were my initial impressions of this thing. I was planning on using it a lot longer before I made a video, but um, with the with some of the issues that I found and some of the kind of the disappointment in lack of features that I found with this thing, I wanted to make sure to get this video out there. So hopefully it can help someone else out. Um, I will reach out to Field Piece and see if maybe I just got a faulty unit and and test another one if they'll send me one out. Um, I'll update this video if they're if they're if the new one possibly doesn't have the same issues. Um, I'll update that and let you guys know. So we'll just have to see what they say there. So let me know if you guys are having any of these same problems with it or if, or if, what have you guys have seen for those of you that are running it. Let me know, I'm curious to see if, if mine is just a faulty unit. And also I missed the video last week. So the winner of those DeWalt shears is Tyler Williams. So Tyler, go ahead and shoot me an email. I'll put the I'll put my email address in the description. Send me your info and I'll get those sent out to you. Hopefully you can put a put them to some good use. So as always guys, hopefully this video was helpful. If you're not subscribed, I'd really appreciate you considering subscribing. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit thumbs up. It really helps me out. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and hit thumbs down and let me know.